a tool which is used to execute a Swift code from Kotlin in a KMP project. That's the shortest definition that I could think of right now. And there is more to it. But really, C-interop is a mechanism that uh, generates uh, Kotlin bindings so that we can use uh, Swift and iOS APIs directly in Kotlin in an iOS main source set, for example. I will explain you everything you need to know, what it is, how it works, how it can help us to utilize uh, more iOS APIs from our Kotlin code, and at the end I will showcase a real practical example. The interoperability that this tool provides is essential for a Kotlin multi-platform projects, especially when uh, integrating uh, platform-specific functionalities that uh, are not available in the shared Kotlin code. There are uh, already some iOS APIs for which uh, Kotlin bindings were already generated by default like Platform, Foundation, and others. But for most other iOS-specific APIs, you need to generate those bindings on your own. The reason why we call this uh, tool C-Interop is because it is used to create the bindings for an Objective-C programming language and not Swift directly. At the time of recording this video, there is uh, no a direct uh, Swift to Kotlin compatibility or interoperability, which means the code that uh, is written in Swift needs to be annotated with uh, Objective-C annotation. And those annotations in Swift are used to expose uh, Swift code to the Objective-C runtime. This is particularly important for interoperability between uh, Swift and uh, Objective-C. Now, we may argue about the reason why they didn't start working on a Kotlin to Swift interoperability at in the first place. But keep in mind that uh, this technology started developing even before Swift language was that popular. However, I do believe that uh, we're gonna see a direct support for uh, interoperability between Kotlin and Swift in the near future. At least, that's what I have heard at Kotlin conference earlier this year. Let's say that we have this class written in Swift. To be able to call this class and uh, execute its function from Kotlin, we need to add those uh, Objective-C notations on uh, both class and function. Keep in mind that uh, you also need to specify a, a public visibility modifier just in case. Now, with this uh, class definition, we could execute a C-interop tool to create uh, bindings for us. There are a few more steps involved, like uh, creating the bridging header and a definition file where we specify the location of the headers, the package name, and other things. But uh, I'm not going to go too much into details about those uh, extra steps, because I will show you an easier way. We're gonna use uh, one uh, Gradle plugin that will create those uh, boilerplates for us. But before that, let's make sure that you understand what are those bindings actually. You may think that we are translating the whole Swift or Objective-C code into the Kotlin language. But that's not the case. These bindings are Kotlin representations of the Objective-C definitions, which allows you to call the native functions and they use native types directly from Kotlin but the function itself is uh, executed in Swift. Bindings contain only the abstractions, like the function definition, parameter types, but not the implementation itself. Because with bindings, we are just uh, directed to the Swift functionality, which is then executed. With bindings, we are just uh, able to properly trigger those functionalities from a Kotlin code. And that's all. Now, I'm gonna give you one example. So let's say that we want to implement the logic in our application that will open up a messaging application on each platform with filled in information about the sender number as well as the message text. For that purpose, first we want to create an expect function declaration inside the common main source set. This function takes two parameters. By the way, this is an empty KMP project with a shared UI between Android and iOS which is generated on a KMP wizard. Since this project targets both Android and iOS, we also need to specify an actual implementation for both of them. We can click shortcut Command plus Enter to select them and generate the actual declarations inside each one of those two source sets. For the Android part, we could use an intent to create such a functionality. 
Here, for this to work, we also need to access the context object, which is why I'm gonna create here a new application class and expose the context object as a singleton that uh, we can access from anywhere in this uh, Android uh, main source set. Also, be sure to add this application class in the Android manifest file. Then after that, we can use this uh, context object from this application class within this actual function. Great. Now comes the iOS part. In the iOS main source set, we cannot uh, utilize uh, any existing bindings for this logic to be implemented. Instead, we need to create that logic in a pure Swift code. So, now I'm gonna open up the Xcode environment, and then I'm going to create here a new package or directory inside the iOS uh, app folder. I'm going to name that directory SMS. And then, here inside, I want to create a new Swift class called SMS Manager. For the demonstration purposes, I will paste here the Swift code, which will be used to do the same thing as in our Android platform. And don't worry if you're not familiar with the Swift code. I have also used the ChatGPT to generate this function. Now, by marking Swift classes, methods, properties, and other declarations with uh, Objective-C notation, you make them accessible from uh, Objective-C. Because I have already said that uh, C interop uh, tool works only with uh, Objective-C and we need to expose this uh, Swift to Objective-C. So that uh, we can generate those uh, bindings for a use in a Kotlin code. Also, don't forget to mark this uh, class uh, as well as a function with a public visibility modifier. Great. The next step is to add a new plugin which is called SwiftKlib. This uh, Gradle plugin will help us to create uh, those additional header and definition files that uh, we need in order to generate Kotlin bindings. It's a pretty useful plugin, so be sure to start this repository as well. Anyhow, now let's define this uh, plugin in the version catalog file. And also, we can declare this uh, plugin in both of those uh, Gradle build files, project level and compose app Gradle build file. Finally, we need to add a few more lines of code within the Gradle build file. So, for each iOS target, we need to add this block. Now, this create function accepts the name of a directory in which you have created the Swift file that needs to be used for generating Kotlin bindings. In this case, that's the folder called SMS. And at the end of this Grail build file, we also need to add another block. As a path, be sure to specify exact same path name of that SMS directory. Now, the reason why I have added uh, those uh, two dots at the beginning of this uh, file path is because currently we are inside our Compose app directory. And to get out of this uh, folder and navigate to the iOS app directory or SMS directory, we need to go one step back. And this uh, two dot uh, index will help us do exactly that. Now, below that you can also specify the package name under which those bindings will be created afterwards. And that's everything you need to do. So, after all of that, just be sure to rebuild your project. And this plugin will do the magic to generate uh, all those bindings. The only thing that is left is to test this out. So, let's open up that uh, actual declaration for the iOS source set. And after we have rebuilt the project, we can try calling that uh, SMS handler class that uh, we have declared in Swift. First, be sure to import that uh, same package that you have specified earlier in the Gradle build file. And then you will see here the SMS folder appearing right away. Great. Below in this code, let's call the SMS handler class and uh, trigger its function. There you go, so now we are able to call that uh, native Swift code from Kotlin. Perfect. Finally, let's see if this uh, logic works exactly the same on both platforms. Now I'm gonna open up the app uh, Kotlin file from the common main. Then on the center of the screen I will add the button that will trigger this uh, same function on uh, each platform separately. After that we can run both Android emulator and iOS simulator. And as you can see now we are able to open up that uh, messaging application with the uh, filled in information that we have already specified. So it works great, doesn't it? Have you tried building a KMP app with the help of a C interop before? Comment down below and let me know. 
Other than that, be sure to leave a like to this video, but only if you find it helpful. Thank you for watching.